Hello everyone and welcome to another Monster Musume Explained video. Today's video will be all about the lizard folk. This video will tie in with the Mon Musu Dragons Explained video so I would recommend checking that one out first. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. Now, the lizard folk are a demi-human race with lizard-like attributes and qualities, such as scales, claws, and some with detachable tails, and just like regular lizards, lizard folk are also cold-blooded. The lizard folk are regarded as one of the oldest sapient species of monsters due to their reptilian DNA, directly linking them to the age of the dinosaurs. Like other reptilian monsters, the lizard folk are cold-blooded and can only regulate their body temperatures through behavioral methods such as basking in the sun. Due to this, they are susceptible to cold temperatures so they will seek a place to hibernate unless their temperatures are at a functioning level. Lizard folk also possess strength above the average human so they make good bodyguards and escorts for humans. However, lizard folk are still weaker compared to other monster species such as ogres and dragons. The tail of a lizard foe gives them better balance than an average human and allows them to make sharp turns without losing control of their movement. Like some species of lizards, the tail is also detachable as a means of distraction. However, doing so can be quite dangerous to a lizard foe's health as the tail is where they store nutrients and without it can cause them to die of malnutrition. When the tail does finally grow back, the bone is replaced with solid cartilage so it is a trick or method that can only be done once. The lizard folk tail is also stronger and thicker than that of a dragon newt, therefore their hips are also wider. And also just like dragons and dragon newts, lizard folk have trouble sleeping due to their tails not allowing them to sleep on their backs. Their scales are similar to dragon newts, but lizard folk have more individual scales. That is because lizard folk have bodies suited to being able to live on the ground, and also similar to Lamias, lizard folk can also shed their skin. Now the lizard folks have two subspecies, those being the salamanders and the bullywugs. There's actually a third one called rock lizards, but they've never been shown at all except a brief mention, therefore they are getting skipped. The first subspecies are the salamanders, which are a group of monsters that are said to live near volcanoes, can spew flames, and are completely immune to fire and high temperatures. The salamanders are considered to be one of four monster species to represent the cardinal elements, with salamanders obviously representing fire, sylph representing air, undines represent water, and gnomes represent earth. The origins of the salamander in our real world can be traced back to ancient Greece and the medieval times. The second subspecies are the Bullywugs, which are a pseudo-human species that possess frog-like attributes such as flippers and long prehensile tongues. The mucus they excrete is also an extremely effective moisturizer and prized in beauty products. As amphibious beings, Bullywugs inhabit wet places such as rainforests, marshes, damp caves, or any environment that is shady and dark and has water nearby. Forming mobile tribal societies that value power through strength, Bullywugs are thought to be fiercely territorial and will aggressively attack any outsiders that approach. It can be considered weird that Bullywugs are a subspecies of the lizard folks since frogs are amphibians and not lizards, let alone reptiles. However, there's actually a connection between the two groups of animals as reptiles evolved from amphibians. The Bullywugs originate not from mythology, but from Dungeons and & Dragons. And that is practically all of it for this video. If you made it this far into the video, thank you for watching, like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. And I will see you in the next one.